Hello everyone, welcome to the channel. Hope you all have a fantastic day. So today we're doing brakes on the Jeep Cherokee 1978. So got the fuel injection system done. Went ahead, I started and I replaced the parking brake cable on the passenger side. So I had a parking brake in case of emergency. And wow, um, was not expecting that. I knew that the front brakes were decent and I was just kind of waiting to do the rear brakes. I was going to do a uh, disc brake conversion and well, it's not going to happen. We're going to go ahead and I'm going to put brand new drum brakes in the rear. Uh, main reason is it's a four to six week wait to get the parts for the drum brake conversion and I want to be able to drive this thing. So brake job. We're going to do that today but not your typical brake job. So when I say typical brake job, most people just pad slap their uh, vehicles. Whether it be drums or discs, they put new uh, pads or shoes and that's it occasionally they will do a drum or a rotor or have their rotors turned but we're gonna go one step above that so let me go ahead and show you what's on the table behind me so we can go ahead and get this project started so right here is pretty much everything I need to do my brakes so let's start on this half of the table here um, I have the parking brake cable I'm gonna go ahead and replace this while we're in there for the driver's side I have new shoes for the driver's side I have a new extended stainless steel um, brake line right there. Right there is the hardware kit, which I have already dumped out on the table to verify it's, uh, everything's in there. New wheel cylinders, new brake fluid, because we're pretty much gonna flush out all the old stuff. Good to know, because all the fluid on this thing has been done except for the brakes and the transfer case. And I have a picture uh, just to kind of show you what a drum brake setup looks like. Here's the rear, here's the front. Also on here, went ahead and I have new drums and that'll be important here in a second. So on the front side, we have new rotors right there. I do have new soft brake lines again. The brake lines are from Rusty's Off-Road. Um, I purchased them with the lift. I have new ceramic pads. And while I'm in there changing everything else out, we have new calipers. Now, some of the stuff on here is overkill and I don't have to do it, but the soft brake lines I really want to do because, well, they're old. And I don't know how old. I know they've been changed out at least once because this did have a four inch lift on it when I got it. Now, the beauty of a Southwest vehicle truck like this is usually they're pretty much rust free. It's just the interior in them deteriorates because of the heat, the sun, all that, where it's reversed on the East Coast that the body is just roached out. You know, it's all, a lot of times it's not taken care of. Uh, they just rust out your, your brake lines, all that stuff goes bad, which is rust, fuel lines, that type of stuff, but the interior is really good. So uh, we've already done the interior for the most part, still got to uh, tidy a few things up, but underneath everything looks good. So I have all the brake parts behind me. We're gonna change everything pretty much, but the proportioning valve and the master cylinder and then the hard lines. Now, if I have an issue with the hard lines, we'll just go get a new one. I will make my own hard lines. They're not real hard to make. I know you can buy kits for this uh, to replace all the hard lines, but there's really nothing wrong with it. Now, why did I stop driving this? Well, let me show you. Now I have cheated. I have jacked the Jeep up. I got the tires off. I did take off one of the brake drums to kind of speed things up. Less me talking and uh, let's, let's just show you why we're doing this. So here's your drum brake right here. Now you got your wheel cylinder, which I am going to replace that because well, they're only like five or six bucks a piece. We got new shoes, new springs, new hardware. But if you look over here in your rear brake, you see that little groove there and you see those rivets. It's not supposed to be like that. And honestly, there's really no meat left on these pads. So it was metal on metal. Well, let's show you the drum. See those two grooves there? Yeah, those aren't supposed to be there. So that's why I haven't been driving this, even though I have the fuel injection kit installed, because when I saw this, this is not safe for the road, and I don't want to put my life at risk or anyone else's. So if you will notice, this is the new parking brake cable from BJ's Off-Road that is extended, and that's how I found these were so bad, and why I am just going to rebuild these versus putting the disc brake conversion. And again, like I said, with disc brake conversion, it was four to six weeks out. It's about a thousand dollars to do the disc brake conversion with the proportioning valve and all that. I got all the parts for this for around $400 out the door. And that's the new brake lines, rotors, shoes, pads, wheel cylinders, hardware kit. So 
Anyways, let's go ahead and let's get started. This is something like this. It's not too hard. Uh, the hardest part of this whole process will be bleeding the brakes. Okay, first thing I'm gonna do to start is I gotta get these shoes off. So I'm gonna remove these springs here. Now, my way is maybe not the correct way. Everyone has their own way of doing this. Um, but one tip you can do is take lots and lots of pictures. So with these, what I was just doing is if you look, it's keyed. This goes in like this. So it comes from behind the wheels and turns and once it locks in. So I was just pushing this in to rotate it out. Now, I should be able to pop this off. There's your parking brake. So I'll get a wire brush, clean this all up, and we'll go ahead and take the wheel cylinder. You saw how easy that came apart. Uh, again, screwdriver, pliers, uh, just some muscle, not a big deal. The hardest part is getting the retainer pins. It's got to turn them 90 degrees. Um, I like to stick my hand around the back to twist it as I push it with a pair of pliers. So we're going to take the wheel cylinder out next. Uh, pretty easy. It's a 3 8 um, wrench for the hard line and then a half inch socket or wrench to actually holds the wheel cylinder on. And that's right here. So I've already gone ahead and taken the hard line off. As you can see, I'm dripping fluid, but that's okay because, well, I'm going to end up flushing all the old brake fluid out. So I got one bolt out and just get the other one. So it should move to loosen up now. There we go. I don't know how old this wheel cylinder is. It could be original, it could be replacement, but um, there we go, come on. And there's that. So, you can see the brake fluid's there. I did leak some out. Um, it is coming out of that side and that brake fluid does not look so great. So it's a good thing we're flushing it. So we'll get the new one on get all this cleaned up with the wire brush. You can see I've started and then we just put it back together. Now, one thing to remember, if I haven't said it already on camera, take pictures. If you've never done bre drum brakes, take pictures and only do one drum at a time. That way, if you get confused or lost or whatever, you can go ahead and take the other side apart and compare before you take it apart. So let me get this cleaned up, the wheel cylinder on, and then we'll just reassemble this and start with the other side. Just like that, through the magic of video, it is reassembled back together. Uh, pretty easy. I did run into one snag. Let me show you. There it is. And all this glory, everything back together with new springs. Now, this spring, I did have to use the second one that came with the kits. Because if you look here, that shouldn't be like that. Uh, for some reason, when I went to put it on, it just stretched. And just for reference, here is the old one I took off. So, final thing to do, go ahead and put the drum on and then put some lug nuts on it just to hold it on and move to the other side before we bleed it. So really quickly before I finish up this driver's side, I didn't get to show you how to install the parking brake. Uh, so let me show you that real quick. So you need parking brake cable. The old one I unfortunately had to cut out. So it looks like this on this end. This piece right here will go ahead, let's get a close up and pop into the back of the parking brake. And then this, you're going to pull the spring back and lock it into the piece. Now, this is the piece. So mine is gonna sit just like this. There's the piece that kind of locks into, and it goes sideways, and then it sits up and the drum breaks. So I'll go ahead, and show you how that slides through real quick. So if you look in the back, I'm gonna go ahead and slide it on in. Push the clips in just like that. And then your piece is right there. Let's see if I can do this one-handed. But it's just gonna sit like that. And then when it'll pull tight, and then this top piece locks into the brake. So let me go ahead and get this done, and then we'll move on to changing the brake line. The driver's side drum brake is back together. I still gotta put the parking brake on. As you can see, it's just hanging down there. The new one, if I have to drop the skid plates, 
So I've moved under to, so I went ahead and moved to underneath the vehicle to replace the brake line, uh, the soft one with that new stainless steel one from Rusty's four wheel drive. And found an issue someone else has been in there previously. Now I knew this because it already had an extended brake line on it, but they've pretty much stripped the fitting that goes in. So could be an issue. Um, probably have to make a new brake line. Not a big deal. I can do that. But uh, let me show you how you do this so you can do it for the future and hopefully yours isn't rounded off. So I went ahead, sprayed some brake clean, wire brush, I did crack them. So this, just like the outside, is a 3 8 This one here is a 3 8 This one up here is a 7 16 That one there, I need to grab onto this right there. That one was the 5 8 right here. So to get this brake line out, you're going to pull this pin here with your pliers. Come out like that. And you can unscrew this, which again, I've already cracked. Pull this off. And then take this one off there. Like I said, it's a 3 8 Be a little bit quick about the socket. Now, a lot of brake fluid is not draining out. Uh, that's because when I pulled the wheel cylinders, it dropped the pressure, but the center line is full of brake fluid. So I got it off, but I don't think how well the camera's gonna show this. This fitting's just trashed and rounded off. So I'm probably gonna need to make a new one of those before um, I go any further. But it's a pretty simple process. You're gonna go ahead. Take this old one, push it back up here, it'll thread in there, and then same process here, it'll just bolt on. So, so let me see if I can get this one back together as I don't have the parts to make this today. And then um, I can always re-bleed these later, but we'll see if we can get a good seal because that'll drive me up a wall just knowing it's like that. So key is not to bend or pinch these lines. Well, ran into a snag, went, to, went ahead, you know, changed this brake line out, and well, a little length difference there. Um, it doesn't fit, and what do I mean? Well, it's this end right here. This one is bigger. Now, when I called Rusty's, they said there's two sizes available, and I ordered the size I thought it was, so it's my fault. So I gotta go ahead, give them a call in the morning, see if I can overnight apart. part, um, just to get this new brake line. And while they're doing that, I'm gonna go ahead and remake that other side that's damaged because well that was driving me up a wall knowing that somebody has just stripped the nut so for you it's going to be just a second for me maybe a couple days so i'll be right back well it's officially the next day and let me just kind of tell you where we're at before we move to the front brakes so i was going to make the rear brake lines but i actually found some stainless steel ones online for about 40 bucks a set the reason i didn't make them was I couldn't find a rock guard and that's that curly piece around the brake line that protects it from rocks because you know this is a Jeep it should go off-road the other thing is is I ordered that wrong size from Rusty's off-road so to alleviate that problem uh, before the new one gets here I went ahead and I got this Dorman part right here it's a quarter inch to a 3 16 inch reducer now I'm gonna take this out when I get the new brake lines in but this will get me there just until I can get those installed. Um, it's not a big deal because it's a quarter inch going into that top brake line and then when it comes out, it goes down to a 3 16 anyways. It's not that much of a restriction. So I'm not too worried about that. So now I'm gonna move on to the front brakes, which is a really simple job. Now if you've never done a Dana 44, there are some oddities versus these new um, IFS, IRS vehicles. And let me, let me show you that. So coming down here, if you look right here, this is your rotor. Now I did uh, remember the previous owner telling me that he just had the bearings done and I couldn't remember if he said he had the brakes done and I think he did because these pads look pretty new. We're gonna replace those anyways. The rotor, I'm not gonna replace right now. And here's the reason. To take the rotor off, you have to come in here and you have to take the end here off, which is pretty easy. Um, this pops out and then there's some snap rings in here and then there's a big spring and then behind that big spring are two nuts and like a spring washer. Now those nuts require a special axle nut tool that for some reason I can't seem to find. Um, it's basically a big, 
huge socket that goes over the axle stub and it's got four teeth um, every 90 degrees to take those retaining nuts off. Uh, once you get those off, you would take your caliper off and then it all comes out as an assembly. And then your studs right here, you would either press out uh, if you want to reuse them or you would just beat them out with a hammer and put new studs in. So your rotor um, is attached to this stub shaft. I don't know what this is called here. So today I'm just gonna replace the brake lines, the caliper and the pads. Again, these rotors look pretty much brand new. There's no grooving. The pads actually look brand new also. While I'm in there, I'm just gonna replace it. Now I will do the rotors here in the future, just not today. So let's go ahead and get started. This should be a pretty easy job. One other thing, so you saw on the back brakes, it was stripped out. I had to use some pliers. Um, you probably saw me use a box wrench. Well, the reason I was using a box wrench is my flare wrench wouldn't go on there because it was so stripped, rounded over, I just, I couldn't get it on. So anytime you're working with these hard brake lines, use the right tool. A set of flare wrenches isn't that expensive. You can buy onesies and twosies. Um, obviously I'm gonna get a three eighths, but it will make your life easier. And if you look at how much more the flare wrench has, it just grabs just a little bit more. The brake lines are really delicate and they will strip. So get a flare wrench, make your life easy. Um, unfortunately, someone didn't do that in the back. So not only do I get to uh, fix those, but I'm gonna bleed these brakes because they said it could be 10 days before those lines ship. And then when those come in, I get to bleed them again. It's not a big deal, but just something thought. So let's go ahead and get these apart and get this done. All right, so I'm gonna come up here to the hard line, put my flare wrench on. So we'll just let that drip. That old fluid's nasty anyways. Um, now I am not gonna take this off the caliper because I just don't care. I'm gonna unbolt it from here because this mount is gonna go away. Um, when they've installed the Rough Country list, they just lowered the brake line. I don't even know if these are extended, honestly. So I'm gonna take this off. I have a new one I'm gonna put on there anyways. There's that. Let that drip into the pan. Next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take this caliper off, and this is a 3 8 um, Allen head. So, make sure we're going the right direction. Remember when you're doing this, these are just slide pins and it's only threaded right here. Everything else just slides. Take that off and there we go. So if you look at a new leak, these pads are honestly, they're pretty good. Um, I don't know what brand they are. Doesn't really matter. But I'm gonna go ahead and like I said, put all new hardware on here. I'll eventually replace this. Let me get this cleaned up and we'll start the install. All right, so I went ahead, I put this mount on that comes with the Rusty's off-road lines. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna put this side of the brake line uh, to the hard line first, just so that fluid can gravity feed through this as I'm putting the caliper on. So it's pretty simple. Push it through. Now I'm not gonna wrench on it right now. I'm just gonna get my, let's get a little tighter with the flare wrench. All right, it's snug in there. Next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and take my clip. Um, see it's nice and bent. And that's gonna go in a groove on here just to hold this brake line in. So installing these new calipers is really pretty easy. I mean, it comes with all the hardware. You have new slide pins that you're gonna to go ahead and take out. He has a plug in the drain for the brake line and then new bleeder valves. It also comes with the appropriate hardware, a new banjo bolt, and it comes with the brass 
washers or crush washers that go on either side of the brake line. Now, these ones for this Jeep are not interchangeable. They are right and left, and it's pretty easy to tell. But if you have a confusion of parts, go ahead and just compare it to the old uh, brake. So let's go ahead and get these installed. First thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pull this plug out, pull the pins out, and then we'll get the brake pads loaded. So taking the pins out of your caliper is pretty easy. They just slide out. I remember those threads there, only screw into there, so this sitting in here. I went ahead and I pushed, you can see that pin there? This pushes bushing out. That goes in and out as your brake pads wear. Now for the brake pads, I went ahead and I just got some Bosch brake pads. Uh, these are the ceramic. Just keep the dust down, noise down. Um, not overly expensive. What you're gonna do is you're gonna install this clip right here, and then it does come with Bosch's own grease right here for the back of your pads. Now when you install these, pretty simple. This one is gonna clip in. You see that clip you put there? It's gonna go inside the piston. Now the other one, you can't really mess it up. It's got a lip right here that just sits right there, just like that. So pretty easy, we'll get these greased up, we'll put them on, and then uh, we'll hook up the new brake line. I got some fluid dripping out of it, so some of the air's out, um, and then we can go ahead, wrap this up, and hook up that parking brake. So once you got these tight, next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take our new hardware. So you have your banjo bolts. You can see it has a hole there for the fluid to go through, another hole there. You're gonna put one of your washers on. And I'm gonna take this end of the brake line, put it through, another one of these crush washers. And I'm gonna go back over here. I'm just gonna set it on there and hand start it. So a final part of this install after uh, bleeding the brakes or before I bleed the brakes, honestly, is I'm going to hook up that parking cable. Now to do that, I need to drop skid plate. It's not really a big deal, but let me show you what it looks like on the passenger side. And you'll see how easy it is. Um, when I do the driver's side with the skid plate, I'm actually not gonna drop the whole skid plate. I'm gonna pull it down just far enough to pull the clip and put a new clip in with the brake line. So let me get underneath there and show you the passenger side. So I'm underneath the passenger side. So this is where the cable will hook into. You see that? It just slides forward and there's this little exit here. It's gonna go through something on the frame like this. And all you're gonna do is use a uh, clip that clips it in just like on that front brake line. And it'll just slide in there. Now, if you need to adjust it, you're just gonna follow it around up to the front. And here is the mid cable here. And you would adjust this nut here in or out um, if there's too much tension or not enough tension at all. So I'm going to put the new cable on before I adjust this. Well, that's it for today's video. I am going to wrap it up. It's uh, been much longer than I thought. I got, as you can see there, the wheel is on. I've got them on. I've torqued all the wheels. Don't forget to do that. Torque your lug nuts because, well, I had everything off. So again, like I said, last thing I have to do is just bleed the brakes. I will do that uh, with the power bleeder off camera. I'm probably honestly just gonna wait until those new brake lines come because there's no reason to believe them twice, honestly. Um, next stop for me is to take the old calipers back. Uh, you do pay a core charge, so I don't have an issue taking them back. I'll get like 14 or 15 bucks back a piece. Uh, no reason to throw them away, recycle. Um, and then next video, transfer case. Getting super close on wrapping the Jeep up. Got the transfer case, still gotta drop the seats off. I found a shop, I just haven't had time to get down there and drop the seats off to be reupholstered. But once that transfer case is in, the two-wheel drive conversion's in, we can go ahead and uh, get this front axle buttoned up. Get the um, glove box back installed. That's the only reason I haven't installed it is that. And then decide if I wanna fix the air conditioning or not, because really, it needs two new lines. The two uh, main lines going from the compressor are just hard as a rock and they're not holding the vacuum. And I don't know if I want to fix it or not. If I do that, I'm gonna, I am gonna—I gotta drop the air conditioner, the under dash unit, and I'm just gonna replace everything. Um, so I gotta figure it out. I live in Phoenix, 
So if I'm gonna keep it, I gotta fix it. If I'm gonna sell it, um, I don't know yet. So we're getting super close. Like I said, next video, we're gonna do the transfer case. So that should be exciting. And the brakes will be led by then. And this thing I will trust to actually start driving, put more than the few miles I have put on it and just enjoy it for a few weeks. Oh yeah, and windows, they gotta get tinted because I hate looking like a fishbowl. So don't forget to like, share, subscribe. I hope you learned something and until next time.